Hi guys, again, hope everybody's safe and well. In this video, I'd like to discuss the tune-up with the nozzle assembly itself. Well, first things first. When it comes down to our electrodes, we want to make sure they're cleaned. Anybody remember how we clean the electrodes? What would we use to clean these steel electrodes? That would be emery cloth. Make sure they're clean and free of carbon. In addition to that, we have to make sure they're both cleaned and gapped. So now what we want to do is make sure that the gapping of the electrodes is correct. We want to make sure we have a gap between the electrode tips of how many sixteenths of an inch? Anybody remember? That would be three sixteenths of an inch. The next measurement is the distance between the gap between the electrodes and the nozzle itself, the middle of the nozzle. Anybody recall what that height has to be? Well, that would be 5 sixteenths of an inch. Make sure we measure 3 sixteenths between the electro gaps. Between the electro gaps and the center of the nozzle should be 5 sixteenths of an inch. Lastly, who remembers how far the electro tip should stick out past the edge of the nozzle? Well, that would be 1 sixteenth of an inch. So for the electrodes, make sure they're finger tight plus a quarter turn in the screw. Remember, yes, I went ahead and quoted that from my Air Force days. As a true story what happened to me in Riverhead at the hospital during an overnight shift, I socked down these electrodes a little bit too tight. Ended up cracking the porcelain. Thank heavens we had another one stock. Get them tight enough, finger tight plus a quarter turn, that should do it. Keep them secure, but you don't want to crack them. Now I'd like to get on to the nozzle itself. This nozzle is going to be removed and replaced on an annual basis. As we physically look at nozzles, you may say to yourself, well, heck, they look all the same, but they are different from each other. Even though they physically look the same, we have to get those three pieces of information off of the nozzle assembly in order for us to do a proper tune-up and to appease both our boss and the customer, making sure whatever nozzle we took off, we put back on. Anybody remember the three nozzle characteristics? Those would be GPH or gallons per hour, spray angle, spray pattern. Gallons per hour, for residential oil burners, that should be a certain range. Anybody remember that range and how many gallons per hour for a residential oil burner? That would be 0.5 to 1.5 gallons per hour. Spray angle, well, as you're going to see in the NORA test, they're going to ask you about what is the spray angles. They can range from what degree to what degree. Anybody remember the number of degrees? In this case, we want to make sure we have a spray angle available between 30 degrees for a rectangular chamber and 90 degrees for a square or round chamber. In addition to that, the spray pattern. Spray pattern, you're going to have solid and you're going to have hollow. Anybody remember when I would use a solid spray pattern? What size of burner? The burner or boiler itself would have to be relatively small to use the solid pattern. I have a small chamber I want to warm up, and in this case I want a solid pattern. In contrast, what I saw at the hospital there in Riverhead would be a gigantic boiler the size of our entire laboratory. That would call for a hollow spray pattern. Take the heat and concentrate it on the edges of the flame so we warm the outer walls of that big boiler. Any questions? If there are questions, feel free to go ahead on chat we and go ahead and write them down for me. But in this case, just remember, all nozzles are not built the same. Stay tuned and look for more videos in the corner.